1071-11, assigned to Hangzhou 0100 and in accordance with the Wandering Earth Act, Article 32, Section 1, your transporter and your entire crew have been requisitioned. What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at another Joy Toy set, the Wandering Earth Collection. And this is based on a hit movie over in China that's airing on Netflix right now. And I have to say, I've watched the movie and it's actually pretty good. With the exception of the really poor American voiceovers, it's worth watching. Taking a look at the packaging, you can see these come in window boxes, which is collector friendly. If we turn it onto the side, it has the Wandering Earth written on all three of the boxes in that foil lettering. It has Joy Toy written on the top of the boxes. And the same with the bottom. Spinning them around to the back side. You can see it has the each one of the figures numbered. One of three, two of three, and three of three. There's a drawing of the back of each figure on the box. And also, let's take a look at this side. And this just has some manufacturing notes and warning labels on it with the UPC codes. And lastly, back around to the front. Now, if you choose, you can leave these in package and put them on your shelf, but I say, let's open them up and see what's inside. And here we have all the figures out of the packaging. As you can see, each team member comes with his own helmet, pistol. The two on the right come with a rifle, and this guy over here comes with a Gatling gun and a mechanical, highly articulated arm. There's also a pamphlet included with each one of the figures, and it says The Wandering Earth, again on this side as well. And when you open it up, it has a really nice picture of the team and a depiction of each of the characters. Now this one's depicting the heavy machine gunner. If you flip it over, it has some precautions on the top, and also the disassembly example, which comes in really handy for those of us trying to repair these figures. God forbid they fall apart. Now right out of the gate, I wasn't really sure why this particular set costs more than the previous ones. But now that this is in my collection, and I've been able to look at these, I have to tell you, I can really understand why. Let's take a look at him first. Starting with this head sculpt, he has a really stern looking face with brown hair and turning it to the side, you can see the haircut. Coming down to his suit, it's an entire black suit, which is padded. And on the chest, you can see the United Earth patch above the Chinese flag. And here you start to see all the magnificent sculpt work on this exosuit with all the gears and articulation. If I flip him to the side, you really get a good look at the paintwork, the silver and black, again with the pistons and no paint slop anywhere. Just look at that paint on his gloves. Right down his leg is a little bit of red and there's actually a little bit of red on his boot right here. Turning him around, you get a good look at the backpack and all the wonderful detail. You can see the great detail here and the white hoses hanging off the bottom. And up top here, there's a really good look at how all this articulation works with these really tiny ball joints. Absolutely amazing. Let's spin him to the side. And here you can see even more gears and pistons. And again, really neat paintwork. Right down to his leg, you can see the exoskeleton down to his ankle. And back around to the front again. Absolutely amazing sculpt work on these figures. Now mind you, this figure and that figure are absolutely identical. And the only exception is the head sculpts. Now according to the website, the gentleman on the right is the leader and the gentleman on the left is the scout. And you can see he has a faded haircut with black on the top and brown on the sides. Now let's go over each of their accessories real quick. Let's put these guys back here and let's see if I can't get them to stand up on their own. There we go. 
Now, I really want to point out these helmets. They spared no expense on the scalp work or the paint. From the red on the front, to the gold trim and the actual lights on the side. Just look at this detail back here, all the way around. Now if I flip it up, you can actually see they actually painted detail on the inside of the helmet as well. They really didn't need to do that, but they did. I know I'm kind of gushing over these helmets, but the crystal clear visor and all this great detail, I am truly impressed. Now, these two figures have the same exact weapons. Each one of them has this rifle. It's a futuristic type looking rifle, and I'm not exactly sure what kind it is with a clip in the back. It's black with just a touch of silver wash on it. Great looking detail. Now, all three of the figures comes with the same exact pistol, and again, really great detail. It's black with just a touch of silver wash, and let me see if I can tip it just enough so you can see the detail. And I like how it has this forward grip guard on it. Now let's see if we can't get this in the holster. And he has his holster on his front right thigh, and this just slips in here like so. Fits in there nice and snug. Now this is the same for all three of these figures. And on to the final figure, the heavy gunner of the group. Let me bring him in nice and close so you can see all the wonderful detail. He has a really nice looking face and a head sculpt with short black hair. And you can see he's wearing different gear. If I bring him in, you can see that the heavy gunner is a lot more beefed up and protected. He has a carabiner hanging down in the front of his vest, which is flexible and that lifts up out of the way. And he also has a chest knife right here. Let's see if we can't get this out. It's in there pretty tight and again it has a serrated edge and a silver blade. That just slips back in the sheath. Now the only difference between him and his team members is he has a really beefed up tactical vest. And that's so when he's operating the Gatling gun he's protected. And if I flip him around you can see he's got the same exosuit, same backpack, and on his belt he has a port right here and a slot right there. And that's for the Gatling gun. And we'll get into that next. Before we attempt to put the Gatling gun on the figure, let's look at his accessories. And here's that mechanical, highly articulated arm. Now looking at this really close, you can see that this peg is straight and a little bit longer. And this one is on a pivot and has a couple of grooves on it. And that's going to be important when we actually put it on the back of the figure. Again, all these pistons and joints move freely. Let's grab the Gatling gun, and here you see all the amazing detail on the Gatling gun. Right here is the slot for the belt fed bullets, and on the bottom right here is one of the holes for the pegs. Flipping it around, you see it has a handle on this side. Just amazing detail for 118 scale. Black ammo belt. See some sculpt work on the back and all the bullets sculpting on the front. This is really pliable and flexible. Let's put all this great articulation to its test and put this Gatling gun on the figure. Starting with the hydraulic arm, again take note of the differences between the two posts. And the one right here is the one that's going to go on the back of the figure. And if you take them and turn them around, the ports into this right here. And just a friendly reminder guys, please don't Gorilla Grip your figures. These are high-end collectibles. Use care and caution and try not to talk them around too much, otherwise they will break. I did go ahead and warm up these parts for 30 seconds with a blow dryer to soften up all the joints. And as I work this around the front, 
want to get it right here in place. Let's grab his Gatling gun. And I think I'm going to put this in his hand first. And we're going to line up that hole with the peg on the mechanical arm. Let's slip his hand on here. He holds on to that really well. And let's line up the peg and the hole. And again, take your time, work it in, and well, looks like that slips in really easy. And there he is. He's holding this gun like a champ. And now that the gun is in one of his hands, you can actually get a feel for all the great articulation that this hydraulic arm has. From his back of his belt all the way up to the underside of his gun. Absolutely fantastic paintwork and detail. Let's spin him around and what kind of figure would this be if we couldn't get both hands on the Gatling gun? So let's go for it. Let me see if I can't situate this a little bit closer to his waist. Grab his other hand. See if we can't get this on the handle. Look at that. First try. There he is. Now he looks like he's ready for business. And one more piece of detail we got to add is that belt fed bullet system. And this just slots into the side of the gun right here. Push it into place. And see if we can't snake it around to the back of the backpack. And this just slots into that right here and part my big fingers. This thing is fighting me and let's see if we can't get it in to the slot. There it is. Voila. Absolutely insane detail. Let's put his left hand back on the handle. Now there's a scene in the movie where he actually uses this Gatling gun to escape. put on the final accessory which is the helmet. I start with this figure here and this just pops on, fits on nice and snug and doesn't fall off. And here you get the final look of what the figure looks like. All the wonderful detail, really great looking paint and sculpt and just really finishes off this set. And again having this figure in hand it looks like all these parts were painted by hand. Let's put his helmet on as well. And again, his just pops on nice and easily. And lastly, we'll do the heavy gunner. And just as simple. And there we have it. And of course, it wouldn't be a review without going over the articulation. Let's get his helmet out of the way. And you can see his head moves left and right. He looks up about this far and down about this far. And mind you, the articulation is the same for all three of these figures. His arm goes up about this far. And it is hindered a little bit with all these pistons and gears. He does a 90 degree bend with the elbow. And trying to put this up about this far and once again it's hitting that piston. Of course the wrist swivel 360 degrees. His left wrist moves in this direction and his right wrist moves in the up and down direction to better grip his weapons. He has a cut right here below his chest and that's articulated. And of course, he has a cut right here at the waist. So when he bends over, he looks down pretty good. But unfortunately, with all the gear and backpack, 
can only go back that far. Coming down to the legs, you can kick up about this far. Now mind you, all this exoskeleton is moving with him. It's not hindering anything on the legs. His legs even bend with a double joint. Right on his thigh, he's got the swivel, which is hidden by the sculpture of the figure. So that moves 360 degrees. And coming down to his feet, he can point his toe and point it up. Now on these figures, they don't have the toe joints, so there's no cut right here. I don't mind that at all though. All in all, absolutely fantastic range of motion and the engineering with this exoskeleton just blows my mind. I decided to take a moment and put the remaining weapons in the figure's hands and even with all this gear on you can see you can still two-hand this pistol pretty decently. But I have to tell you this actually impressed me. He's actually two-handing this rifle, he's sighting down it perfectly, and with all this exoskeleton, it's moving with his arms, his wrists, his elbows. Now this is engineering folks that blows my mind. If you take your time, you can get these figures to do pretty much anything you want them to do. this review up with doing a little bit of size comparison. Here's a Joy Toy female and a Devil's Toy Woo Medic. How about a custom airborne on a Marauder's body? And of course we can't forget the one and only Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. And here you can see they all scale perfectly together. Well, this has been my look at the Wandering Earth set from Joy Toy. From the amazing articulation, the spot on paint job, the absolutely wonderful engineering of the exoskeletons, and man do I love those helmets. I have to say, Joy Toy once again pushed the envelope with this set. If you have the means, go ahead and add them to your collection. And as always, I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my videos. If you like what you see, Join the community and hit that subscribe button. And remember, share your knowledge. <laughs>